Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. A little bit of a different angle and that's because today is a little bit more of an informal video and it's gonna be a little bit on the shorter side. But I have some repressing to do today and a lot of you guys have been asking about a more full length video about how I repress my products. I've done some shorts, which I will link down in the description, but I wanted to do a more talk through long format video for you guys so you, you can see how I am going to be repressing. Today I am going to be repressing the two shades that I'm working on in my Tarte palette and we can look at what it's looking like on the inside right now. I'm focusing on these two bottom shades and really the pan has been getting so big on this one that it's hard for me to get my brush into there. So I'm going to get a little bit creative today and I'm actually going to put these two pans together but I'm going to keep the powder separate so I'm going to do like a split pan. I've never done that before so it's going to be something new I'm going to try but I wanted to give myself the challenge and be able to film it for you guys. But without any more rambling let's go ahead to the overhead shot so we can see how I'm going to repress these highlighters today. All right, everyone, I have my setup for repressing. So of course I have my product. I have some rubbing alcohol. I have two different spatulas. This one is from Sigma and I absolutely love this. I actually have two of these and I keep one in my bathroom for my skincare. Um, I have my favorite container that I use for mixing up my products and it's just an old Tatcha container. It just has really nice slopes in the container so you are able to get everything out of there. Um, I have a old Bed Bath & Beyond gift card which RIP Bed Bath & Beyond but I'm going to use this to create my split pan and then I also have probably one of the only square products in my collection to help me repress. Since these are square pans, I did need something that is square to be able to repress with. Um, I also do have some Kleenex because this is what I use to press with. I know a lot of people use paper towels. I just think that those have a little bit too much texture. Let me see because I'm going to need to have this folded open and I want something to cover the mirror. So let me go grab something real quick to cover the mirror up so it's not blinding you guys. All right, so I got some post-it notes over the mirror so it does not blind you. And basically what I'm going to do, and here's my idea. So these are two different shades, and this is a shade that was in this Tarte palette mixed with the more subtle side of my Fenty highlighter. And then this is strictly the more intense side to my Fenty highlighter. And this was Mean Money and Hustler Baby are the highlighters from Fenty that are mixed in here. And I actually did just hit this new pan right up here today doing my makeup, but I do want to go ahead and kind of condense these into one pan to make it easier for me to use. Uh, just as an example, this is my highlighter brush that I use, and so getting it into here and actually getting product on this brush has been difficult with this large pan in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that today. Since I do want to keep the products still separate but do a split pan, um, that is going to require me to repress these separately. So I'm going to go ahead and get my metal spatula and I'm going to break up this shade because this is what we're going to start with because I think I want to go ahead and just repress things into this pan over here. So we're basically, I run my tool around the edges and I'm going to keep as much as I can and we're just going to get this product out and into the Tatcha container. Now before I started any of this, I did sanitize my tools with some alcohol wipes, but really since we're using alcohol, I can technically just drop some alcohol in there and then take one of my Kleenex and just clean that pan up a little bit. Again, we're putting the same product right back in, so it does not need to be perfect, but if you want to kind of clean up your pans a little bit, of course now is the time to do it. So we got a nice clean pan and then our product in here. And so I'm just going to break this up even more. Use the sides of your container to kind of press some of those clumps into, help break them up. 
You want it to be as fine of a powder as you possibly can. You don't want it to be too clumpy because those clumps have a hard time getting saturated with the rubbing alcohol and they also have a harder time kind of repressing and that's where you get a crumbly product is when you have bits and pieces that are too large that did not soak up the alcohol. So typically if you shake your product, your larger bits do move to the top and that way you can just go in there and kind of repress those again. Get them nice and small. So that is a nice consistency right there. And now I'm going to start using or adding my rubbing alcohol. And this is where I like to use this rubber spatula because it really does mix the product. It gets into the corners of this container. And so I know in my short I talked about the consistency that you're looking for. And I'm gonna start with just a little bit in there and start mixing that and letting the powder absorb that alcohol. And that might have been a tad bit too much alcohol. And as far as having it in a dropper, if any of you are about my age and if you ever had asthma as a child, um, albuterol for asthma used to come in glass bottles with a dropper that had measurements on the side of it so that you could measure out the amount of albuterol you put in your nebulizer. And my mom saved these bottles all the way back from like the 80s and we have always kept alcohol and peroxide in them. And just whenever I moved out of my mom's house, whenever I was like 19, I took a few with me and I've had them ever since. So these bottles have come a long way with me, but overall you can just use it straight out of the alcohol container or you can reuse any of your other dropper style packaging that you might have from Project Panning. All right, so this is our consistency. I think I did add a little bit too much alcohol, but we're gonna go ahead and get this into the pan. Typically, I like it to be a little bit stiffer than this, but that's okay, we can work with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape down this container and get all of this product out of here. So working in the pan, I do want the product to go all the way to the edges, but my idea for this and why I have the cut in half gift card is that I would like to do something along these lines. And I did sanitize the gift card as well and with some rubbing alcohol. And so I want to get all of this on this side of the pan and try to do, let me see if I can do it where you guys can see it on the camera. But I want to put this diagonally in the pan and then the product will come up to the card. And that's where I want to keep the product just on this half of the pan. Let me go ahead and try pressing this a little bit to get some of that moisture out. Yeah, I had too much alcohol in there, but we will make it right. All right, so I did press the product down a little bit more, but like I said, I wanna keep it to that one side of the pan. So I am gonna take my spatula and move it. And because I got some of that moisture out of there with the rubbing alcohol, it is a little bit more like a dough, so it's a little bit more easy to shape and get it to stay where I want it. So we're gonna go ahead and I actually wanna scrape what came off on the card and put it back in there. And we're gonna get that card back in to see where our line is. 
And again, if some of the product mixes with the other side, it's okay. It's just highlighter. I'm just trying to do something fancy for myself and probably it worked out better in my head than it is going to be practical, but we will still try to see how we can make this look nice. I'm just taking my Kleenex and pushing down a little bit more, just trying to get the overall shape of the product in there. All right, that looks okay for right now. I won't do the final uh, press down until I have the other half of the product in there. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for this side and I'm just going to break it up. And with me having a good consistency over here, this should stay in the pan whenever I tip it up. All right, so I got my second half of my product in here. Same thing, but I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious with the amount of alcohol that I put in there. Just cause this side, I want it to be a little bit stiffer in consistency to really get it to press into the shape that I want. See, that's what I want, that really kind of stiff consistency for the powder. So with that kind of nugget of highlight, we're gonna put it on the other side here. So with this side, I'm just going to fill in the gap that I made on the other half of this highlight. All right, so I generally have a half and half pan there. And let me just maybe redefine it one more time to really get the different sides even though when I press it they are going to press up against each other but I kind of wanted to create that line one more time because there's a little bit more product on this side than on this side but we're gonna go ahead and take that Kleenex again and just lightly tap over it just to kind of get it all to all level out and then we're gonna take the square bit and I'm not pressing hard I'm just coming into the corners and creating good kind of markers on the outside of the product look at that so since I'm not pressing with a you know item that is the same exact size you do get some of it that kind of like squeezes up the side of the product and to me I'm a little bit of a perfectionist with this so I do take my little spatula and I bring that product back down so that I have a nice even product in my pan. Also that product is less likely to flake up with it being pressed up into the side of the pan. Now from this Right now with it wet, you can't really tell that there's a difference in the two sides, but if I can remember in a couple days when this is completely dry, I'll take another picture of it so that we can see, you know, if there is any difference in the two sides. But for me, I will know that there is a more intense side and a more subtle side to this highlighter. So I'm just going back in and pressing again and I like to try to get as even of a surface 
as I can. So maybe a little bit of a tamping motion. There we go, that's beautiful. And because it is a little bit more like a clay consistency, I can tap it out a little bit with my finger and get some of those ridges out. And pretty much there we have it. That is a repressed highlighter. And so again, in a couple days, I'll take a picture of it, but I can see that that line is right kind of there down the middle. And so down here is going to be my more intense side. Up here is going to be my more subtle side. But really, I end up mixing these a lot of times. And so putting my brush in the middle is not going to be an issue for me. But I really kind of wanted to get these two products together so that I could continue to get some really good use on them. I'm going to go ahead and just do my outro from here. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me repress this highlighter in a more long format type of video and kind of really going step by step and showing you guys how I repress my products. This is the best result that I get where my products do not crumble and actually this product right here is repressed and as you can see it's not crumbly, it's not falling apart, it still works beautifully and so I've had a lot of luck repressing my products this way. If you guys would like to see any sort of like other makeup chore type videos from me please let me know and I'll be happy to film those for you but otherwise we will see if I can hit pan in this again before my next project pan update. I don't believe I will but we will see how I get along and how this product looks in a couple weeks when I film that update. I want to thank all you guys for being here. Make sure to subscribe, do all the things, make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and I really do appreciate you guys being here and I'll catch you in my next one.